Eric Packer, the naturopath, all the way from Spain. Actually, I mean New Zealand. I wouldn't mind being in Spain, though. My niece is in Spain at the moment, and she's she's um, basically sitting there for about 12 months. I think she's holed up in some little village somewhere with her husband, having a really good time. So, lucky her. Spain's a beautiful country. Now, how can you tell if you've got a dairy allergy? All right. Well, it's not hard. Let's, for example, see how much cow's milk you're drinking. Yeah. When I think of dairy, I'm thinking about cow's milk. I don't care whether it's green top, blue top, yellow top, or whatever kind of top that you're having, but it's still going to have in it, okay, uh, sugars, it's gonna have proteins in it, can really affect you. So there are various proteins in cow's milk that really affect people bad, some people bad. A lot of it's got to do with tolerability and also your gut function. I'll explain all this. Right. So the first thing you look for with the dairy allergy is is you look for mucus, for snot, you look for saliva, excess saliva production, um, but particularly you look for um, phlegm, okay, for coughing up. You can even see sometimes mucus in the stool if you have a look. Some people you've got a real dairy allergy but lots of mucus in the stool. Mucus coming up from the throat, I don't know where you guys live. If you live in New York City, you've probably never seen a cow before, but they're big animals. They've got four legs, they're massive, okay? If you see a cow, I want you to have a look at its face, all right? And what do you see hanging down here? Ooh, strands of mucus all hanging down, okay? So this is a similar thing you'll see with some kids with dairy allergies, lots of mucus hanging down, not a good idea. And remember, mucus um, is a particularly good breeding ground for yeast and bacteria and this is how people can get sinusitis and all kinds of problems not a good idea <clears throat> the gut really doesn't like too much mucus either because it precludes the ability of the body to break food down properly and absorb it it pushes a person into leaky gut it pushes a person into not absorbing many different you know nutritional uh, properties from that food so how do you know well you take it out okay so you would take out all cheeses, all cow products. Butter is not a problem. So don't think you need to take butter out of your diet, okay? Butter is fat. I don't usually see people having, having allergies or problems or intolerances to, to cows, uh, you know, the butter fat. And even better if you go for ghee, G-H-E-E, -E, which is clarified butter, okay? So by stopping the dairy entirely, okay, Watch the stool, watch the throat, watch the nose, watch the eyes, and uh, particularly the gut. You know, the gut should really start feeling a lot better within about 10 days, seven to 10 days when you stop that. That's how you're gonna tell. But also, remember the eyeball test, look at the stool to see what's going on there, all right? Have a good look. And if all of a sudden you see the mucus disappearing, you know you've got dairy allergy. Now, I've got dairy allergies. But I find that I can have one, two coffees a day, no problem with full cream milk, okay? I make up a nice espresso, you know? You grind the beans, put it in the group head, and then um, and then you get the milk shot, the froth the milk up, so. And there's nothing, in my opinion, as, as nice as a really well-made espresso in the morning, I love it. So small amounts of milk I'm fine with. Um, I don't really otherwise have cow's milk in the diet, but I do love nice cheeses, different cheeses. But again, small amounts, moderation, um, no problem. So should you avoid dairy? Should you not avoid dairy? I don't believe that dairy should be avoided. Um, <clears throat> I don't see it as being, you know, like, you know, nuclear waste in the body. And like everyone freaks out about gluten and dairy at the moment. Like they're almost like the, the Darth Vader's of the dietary world, you know. Don't think like that. It's all got to do with quantity and quality, all right? If you look at some cultures, some patients I've worked with, you know, their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents had cow's milk, they had goats, they had sheep, they had cattle, and some people have had dairy in their lives for generations. Other people, if we go to Japan, for example, where you don't really see a lot of cows, and people don't really drink milk, and of course those people genetically are not really good with cow's milk. Many Asian people cannot tolerate dairy for that reason. It's not part of their, you know, of their makeup. Whereas if you go to other countries like Holland, uh, you know, where they've had cows a long time, they can tolerate generally milk a lot better. But it's up to you. 
it's up to you to determine what you like. I personally prefer a nice, um, we get a, we've got a company here in New Zealand called Jersey Road, I think it's called, and they make a delicious Jersey cow organic milk that's, um, I don't even think it's uh, pasteurized. I think it's homogenized, but not pasteurized. But the nicest milk I ever have is the one straight from the farm, that full cream milk from the cow, that makes the best coffee ever, and also the best porridge. Okay, that's untouched milk. And uh, from grass-fed cows, it's absolutely beautiful. You've got no idea what milk's like until you've had real milk. And I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments on that from people who, who understand that. It's a massive difference between having proper milk as opposed to crap out of a plastic bottle, all right? Think about it. It's called nature. Thanks for tuning in.